We're gonna take down this hanging spruce. It's partially uprooted and you've got a leaning tree. So there's a lot of forces at work inside the, the timber. Uh, so the idea is to release the tree without damaging the fibers and putting ourselves in danger because they can split and go backwards. The first thing that I will do is I'll clear my escape route so I've got somewhere to go if it all goes wrong. What I'm gonna do now is remove some of the buttress flare from the tree. Uh, this does a couple of things. Helps you get your cuts a bit more level, yeah? Uh, and what it can do is reveal the true diameter of the tree. So when they're all stacked up, you can see the correct diameter of it. The next step is to put uh, the sink or face cut in. Uh, and what that does is it weakens the tree in this direction uh, and it gives you, a, or it determines your direction of fall. Once I've weakened it in that direction, yeah, and given it a little bit of direction in terms of where it's gonna fall, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bore into the heartwood of the tree to reduce the risk of it splitting and going backwards. Otherwise known as a dog's tooth cut or a holding cut. And I'll do that from both sides because the tree is bigger than my guide bar. It's important to decide where you're gonna make your last cut from. And the reason is, is the tree could fall suddenly. Yeah, I've looked at this one. Yeah, I suspect uh, that we'll need to winch this tree out, but there is a hazard that it might fall on its own. So I'm gonna make my first cut from this side, then I'm gonna walk around and finish the cut from the other side and then remove the back of the tree. Uh, so that if it does fall, I've got a good escape route in that direction. <laughs> So the last part of the cut is to remove the back of the tree. I always refer to it as a safety catch, okay? So I've removed the tendency for the timber to split yeah, uh, and explode on me, if you like, or barber chair, as we call it in forestry. Yeah, and I've left the safety catch at the back, which I can release. Hopefully the tree will move in a controlled way. Not always right, but as I predicted, uh, this tree hasn't fallen, it's locked up in such a way that it won't fall. We can see that it's hung up there uh, by its high branches. Yeah, so as I've released it, it's just fallen deeper into the other tree and it's got stuck. Yeah, so my plan is to remove the angled bit at the back now and we're going to do a hinge reduction. I'm going to clean the inside of the cut up so that I can get to the hinge and then we're going to use a winch to try and roll this tree out. Um, looking at it, I would say that it wants to roll to the left hand side. When you've got a hanging tree like this, there's two ways that you can deal with this. Both of them fall under the category of a hinge reduction. You can bore the chainsaw through the center of the hinge, creating a letterbox. I'm not gonna do that today because I think it's safer to reduce it from one side. So I'm gonna reduce the right-hand side of the hinge. We're gonna leave the left-hand side as something for the tree to pivot on. And then we can use our winch to try and remove it. So we're going to set the winch up in such a way that it will barrel roll the tree out. I've always referred to it as a barrel roll or a spiral roll, whatever you want to call it. So we've got a winch drop here. This one's uh, got a two ton minimum braking strain. I've passed the left hand side of the winch drop or winch strap through the sewn or stitched eye there. Yeah. And then I'm going to snatch it back against itself yeah, so that it pulls the tree in such a way that it spirals it out to the left hand side. Yeah, thus rolling the tree over in that direction. If we roll it the other way, we're gonna get it even more hung. So I'm gonna connect them all together now, screw the pin into the shackle, and then connect the hook. The, the, the winch is securely down the tree at the base, and secured with a shackle, and then the, the winch cable, if we said through the winch, Like so, and then pulls through. So. The other hand does it the other way so you can release the tension. So I'm now going to go in there and reduce the hinge on the far side. We're going to try and roll it round to the left hand side here. The winch cable's got a bit of tension in it, but it's not fully tensioned. 
uh, and when I give Stuart the signal, which is widely, uh, this is widely the, the signal for take the tension up, yeah, um, hopefully the tree will roll over to the left hand side and it will fall out. All right, so the tree is down safely. Uh, it's important not to walk underneath uh, here if you can avoid it, unless there's absolutely no choice. Yeah, but I can see that there's nothing substantial or no widow makers uh, up in the actual canopy there, nothing that could fall down. All that remains now is to winch the stump back over. This one's done it on its own. It's gone back uh, into the pit. Yeah, uh, sned the tree out and then it's extraction time. So we'll wait for the uh, uh, winch operator and the, the forwarder to come over and, uh, and extract it in one big length.